Viability rankings are standard practice for Smogon for the express purpose of letting people know at a glance what's good, such as Ghastly, what's bad, such as uh, Fungus is kind of mid, or what you should never use ever, such as Wingle, that kind of stuff. However, this is not up to date. The reason for that is around three weeks ago, Giraffric had been banned from Little Cup. And as a result, this viability ranking is now out of date. I don't blame the council for not, like, this is not their top priority. We have other stuff going on. We have Winter League. You have a whole bunch of other stuff. And it's only been, like, two-ish, three-ish weeks ever since Giraffery has been banned. The entire meta isn't going to be figured out yet. So, what I'm going to do is that in order to make sure that some people know what exactly is good in this metagame, I'm going to make a viability rankings myself. I'm been doing this for roughly nine months. I know this tier really well. I, I'm i very confident in my abilities to tell you what's good and what's bad. And I'm in Winter League myself. I'm doing pretty well. But the entire point is, I know what I'm doing when it comes to this sort of thing. So I'm going to make a viability ranking so that way if you're concerned, well, what's good in gas meta? What's bad in gas meta? What's changed? That sort of stuff. I'll be here for that. So first, I'm going to go in alphabetical order. I'm going to go with Axio. I'm going to put that in B-. minus. What it's supposed to do is that you have the Dragon Dance set. It's really nice because Dragon Dance is very often one of the best moves in the entire game. It raises your attack and speed by one stage, so you just get stronger and faster, break over a whole bunch of stuff, and you've got a really nice attack stat, a good speed stat, so that way you can outspeed some really common choice Garfers. If you want to, you can also make it jolly as opposed to adamant, so that way you're a little bit faster. All depends on how you want to play it. you got some good coverage moves. Brick Break, Crunch, you have Aqua Tail if you're worried about rocks. Or ground types for that matter. You have Iron Head, Poison Jab, Shadow Claw, Stomping Tantrum. You got a whole bunch of stuff going on. The reason why it's not much higher is just because it's very feast or famine. You only really have this as a Dragon Dancer and not much else. There's no real defensive utility in addition to it, and it's not that fast on baseline. 16's okay, but it's nothing fantastic. So you just sort of have to play around that. It can be a really good sweeper, but that's really the only role it can perform right now. It's alright. Next up, Azuril. Where do I put this is the question. Like, B minus C? The, the main issue with Azuril, and I, I'll probably I'll put it in C tier. What it's supposed to do is that you have Belly Drum, it maximizes your attack, and then you also have huge power, which means that you're going to be dealing a whole bunch of damage really, really quickly. The main issue is that A, you don't have Berry Juice, you only have Orin Berry, and for those who don't know, Orin Berry heals 10 HP, Berry Juice heals 20, and Berry Juice is just straight up superior. You also have Terra Type Water to boost your Aqua Jets, so you can become really threatening, but the issue is just... You're not very fast, and you need to have the Belly Drum set up in order to be able to do things, and it's really hard to function otherwise. It's like Axew in that like it only does one thing, and that's it. Also, otherwise, the stats are really, really bad. <laughs> like, really, 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 really bad. Axew at least had 16 base speed, so if you were in a, like... You can outspeed some paralyzed bonds, you can clean up endgame without a Dragon Dance if you need to. Uh, Azuril can't really do that. It needs the Belly Drum, is the main issue. And that's why I'm putting it in C. The reason why it's still pretty alright is just because huge power Belly Drum is, frankly, really absurd to deal with. <laughs> Especially with... Terra, Water, Aqua Jet. It's very strong. Next up, Bramblin. I want to put that, like, B plus? Maybe A minus? It got significantly better now that Giraffe Rig is gone. Its stab combination in Grass and Ghost was stuffed by Giraffe Rig because it had Sap Sipper. But now it's significantly better. I don't think it's fantastic. Like, it still is good. It has Rapid Spin. It's also a Ghost type, so it can Rapid Spin while blocking Rapid Spin which is pretty nice. You keep up your hazards while your opponent doesn't get theirs. You have Shadow Sneak as some nice priority. Power Whip hurts really hard. Strength Sap to keep yourself healthy. It's pretty nice. Also, you have Wind Rider. It's, it's a good niche because what you do is that you have Icy Wind immunities. You get an attack boost from Tailwind, that kind of stuff. It's niche. It's nice because it gives you a much better webs matchup because Surskit likes doing that sort of stuff. You're immune to... Like, just having a nice... General immunity is okay. It's just a little bit too specific. But with that being said, it's still pretty good. Shadow Sneak's good priority. It helps deal with other ghost types. And then Power Whip is just so powerful on baseline. 
You also have Spore Absorber, so your Grass type you can deal with Spore significantly easier. It's all nice like that. It's just let down by its very lackluster defensive profile. Like it's got a good attack stat, but then its defenses are kind of bad and its speeds kind of eh. Could be better, could be worse, but it's still really nice. It hits Toad School, hits Water types really hard. It's 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 got a niche. It's nice. Next up is Weasel. Minus or B plus? I'll put it in B plus. The reason why it's used is because rain is actually viable as a strategy, which is pretty incredible to think about because there's no auto setter, there's no like Pelipper with Drizzle or anything going around. Uh, but you still have Swiss Swim and you have an absurd speed tier of 19, which is good both in and outside of rain. So Swiss Swim makes it so that way you literally cannot be outsped, which is fantastic. There's no other way to put it. Plus, you have your, your water type already. You have the new Wave Crash, 120 base power. It's water type Flare Blitz. But the important thing is, like, it's a really powerful stab move, and it can hurt a lot. And combined with Terra type Water and Rain Support, you're going to be breaking a whole bunch of stuff, whether your opponent likes it or not. You can also use Bulk Up, and that can be really annoying to deal with, which is really fun. Because your opponent has to deal with this actively, otherwise they're going to get swept by it. And you have a good amount of stuff that you can run. Wave Crash, you have Ice Spinner as your ice coverage. You have Brick Break if you want to be able to hit Pawnee Art a lot better. You can also run stuff like Aqua Jet. You can run Terra Electric if you want to run that kind of stuff. And then Terra Blast. It all depends on how you want to run it. You can also run it... I've seen it run where you can run Bulk Up Substitutes and then like... There it is. Bulk Up Substitutes, something like that, and then run it on a non-rain team. And then you can you can still run Swift Swim, that's all fine. Oh, you can have Water Veil? Okay, that's actually really nice. <laughs> so yeah, you can run Water Veil instead of Swift Swim so that way you can't get burned, be able to set up on something that would otherwise burn you, that's pretty nice. And then just sub, bulk up, and then sweep through some teams. Pretty nice! Uh, you can also run Liquidation instead of, the cra uh, instead of Wave Crash if you wanted to. All depends on how you want to play it. Next up, Citadel. It gets C tier. It's not, like, it's better than a Zeral as a result of Ice Shard plus Belly Drum, and also this really absurd HP stat that means that you can just take some hits because you can. A better speed stat, and you have some better coverage moves, but the issue is that you're still, you're still a not very fast Belly Drummer. And Ice Shard is good, but you just run into the hard problem with Steel types, like... I'm not sure if I want to order these in the tiers, because I'm not sure if it's even possible, but I think that Citadel is better than a Zeral. But with that being said, it's really hard to use Citadel. But the big the big benefit is that A, your attack set is higher on baseline. It's like, oh, well, what about huge powers? Like, yeah, but it doesn't really matter because Citadel can at least function outside of that and doesn't need it. Like, oh, yeah, you can still use Ice Shard and have it do a whole bunch of damage, even outside of Belly Drum. And Belly Drum's more of an additional use. You have an absurd HP, some pretty serviceable bulk, much better speed stat, and good coverage. Liquidation and Earthquake. Really nice. So that way you can break over the poison types that would otherwise be able to wall you kind of well. Pretty nice. I'm gonna say that a lot, aren't I? <laughs> but Azuril is just very frail comparatively, needs the terrestrialization to be able to put in much more work, and doesn't have as many coverage moves. That's why. Charmander uh, D tier. It's really unfortunate, but it's just very bad. It would be much better if Vulpix was in the tier. The reason why it was it had an issue in last generation is that you have solar power, and what you would do is just throw it on a sun team. It's got a really good speed set of 17 to level 5, which outspeeds a lot of stuff. And then you just start sweeping your opponent, and your can't, opponent can't deal with it. It's great. It would just break through absurd amounts of teams if you didn't have a specific fire resist. It's not great now. Like, it still has some good coverage moves, and... You can try to get a Dragon Dance set in, but the issue is it's way too squishy. Fire isn't a very good defensive typing, especially when Stealth Rocks are up. And you need the Solar Power boost to get your special attack to where you need it to be. So overall, it's just, it's just not working out. Rain has a significantly better time because, like with Weasel, it can still function without the Choice Scarf because of how naturally fast it is. Charmander needs it because otherwise it's too slow. And as a result, it's in a significantly worse position. So, I'm just gonna have to deal with it. It's it's really unfortunate, but 
Everybody's favorite starter is not very good. Next up, we have Choodle, B plus or B. I'll put it in B for now, and I'll explain more about it when I get into Shoveler. But Choodle isn't bad by any stretch. It got Shell Smash this generation, and then you can do Liquidation, Crunch, Ice Fang. That's all pretty nice. Good coverage, really hard to, to, to wall effectively, and then you can Terra type Dark, so that way you can resist Sucker Punch as well as have a boosted Crunch. The main issue with Choodle is just that Shelter exists, and I think that overall it's significantly better as a Pokemon. Like, even though it's like, oh yeah, it gets up to 15 speed, isn't that a really good thing? Yes, but also no. The main issue is that because you're kind of fast-ish, then you can't get a slow setup on certain Mons, and that can be really annoying to deal with. And what I mean by that is, Shell Smash lowers your defense, and that can be a really big issue. So if you set up after your opponent, so if, I should probably go to Shelter wherever I have that. Yep, Shelter. Shelter is ever so slightly slower and has better bulk. And the reason why that's important is that well, you can just take any neutral, defense, like physically offensive hit, and you just take it like it's absolutely nothing, it's whatever, and then you can set up with Shell Smash, and then you can do some absurd Rock Blast stuff because of Skill Link. And it's just really hard to justify Choodle. The good news about Choodle is that it's more, like, immediately threatening because it's got Crunch, Liquidation, Ice Fang. Like, it doesn't need the Shell Smash. Or... Cripes. I thought it was better than it was. It's not. It's got a lower attack stat. It's got nowhere near as much bulk. It's significantly worse off as a result. Uh, it's still a Shell Smasher, so B is... B seems like a really appropriate place for it, so... It's hard to justify using Choodle over Shelder, though. Next up is Crabrawler. It's going in A-plus tier. Mon is cracked. Where is the... Yes! This replay. I'm showing this one just to show, like, how good Crabrawler is as a Mon. This is from Winter League. I think it's last week? Yeah, it was last week. Uh, but... Berries and Cherries, comes in, bulks up once, gets a flinch versus Fungus, then just goes for Ice Punch, doesn't have to do any dumb things about predicting. Ghastly comes on in, oh, it's gonna burn it, then it just goes Terra Fire, takes the Will-O-Wisp, knocks out the Ghastly with a Zen Headbutt, and then the opponent's still playing catch-up from this because it's full health. It does that much, even on a neutral hit, Takes like 50-ish, and then it just heals back with Dream Punch. And it just goes three for one, and it's so easy to do so. It's really good. And if we go to the Team Builder... It's got a lot of coverage moves, but it's got a good enough speed set of 17. Once again, the same tier as Charmander. It's really good. It's got just enough bulk. Good defense, good special defense. Got a good attack stat. For whatever reason, fighting types are just really, really good in Little Cup. But Drain Punch, recovering off your HP. You have Iron Fist, so that way it's boosted. Ice Punch is good coverage. Zen Headbutt to hit gas and stuff like that. Bulk up. It's really, really nice traits to have on a Pokemon. Especially when you, you check stuff like Pawniard and other slower mons really easily. You even... This is technically a Toad School check, which is funny to think about. Because, like, oh, well, you know, Toad School is not really weak to fighting types. Like, yeah, but you have Ice Punch and you speed tie it at, at worst, so... It, it's it's really funny to think about that. But it's so hard to wall because of all the coverage moves that it has. And it's so good as a result. It's really, really popular. It's really, really, really good. A-plus tier. It's really nice. Next up... Krogunk. B minus? It's kind of hard to tell with Krogunk because it's very weird stat wise. If we look at it, it's got like good attack, good special attack, but its defenses are kind of weird and its speed is just kind of eh. Oh, uh, you also do Terra Dark. Forgot about that. But you can run like a nasty plot set. You can run. Do you get Swords Dance? Oh, do you not get Swords Dance? It's unfortunate. Uh, but you can run, like, a physical or a special set because your attack and special attack are tied. You have defensive utility because of dry skin. You can do Terra-type Dark to get rid of your Psychic Weakness because you have a quadruple. And you also absorb Toxic Spikes. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but the issue that I find with it is just it's very outclassed by other things. 
If you want to have a better nasty plotter, just use Ghastly. Significantly better overall. If you want to have a better poison type that can do more defensive things, you have Marion E. If you want to have a more offensive poison, then use Glimmet. It's very hard to justify, but also with that being said, it has a niche because it's a dry skin, so it has immunity, much better rain check. I, I can't really see too much of too much use outside of B minus tier. It's very like Crabrawler is significantly better as a fighting type. There are better poison types. It's very very weird to use, but it's not bad. It, it's it's gonna be in B minus tier. It's weird. Next up, Deerling. I think a a a minus. Yeah, A- minus seems really comfortable for it. It's not good enough to be A tier, but it's not bad, so it's out of B plus tier. Not saying that these are bad, but it's, it's got a lot of valuable stuff going on. It's got Paraflinch hacks because it has Serene Grace, which double secondary effect chances, so Headbutt and Zen Headbutt have really good flinch chances. And then you can do Thunder Wave to paralyze the opponent, make it even more obnoxious. You can also put in Trailblaze instead, so that way you're faster, and then just... Oh, I have a Scarfer! That'll be my way to deal with Deerling. Haha! <laughs> no. No. You also have Synthesis to keep yourself healthy. Because you're a normal Grass type, you have a pretty interesting matchup versus Ghastly. You can absorb Spore really well, so you're a good check to Toad School. Uh, Terra type, it was Ghost before. I'm not sure if that wants to stay that way. Maybe? You can play around with it. Uh, but overall, it's still a really good Pokemon. It's got a good stat line. 60 attack, 50 defense, 50 special defense. Bulkier than the average Mon. And you also get up to 18 speed. 18 is really, really valuable as a result of outspeeding quite a bit of stuff. I think you only get outspeed like... Wingle, Meowth, Diglett, and Voltorb? That, that's unboosted, by the way. No, not counting Scarf Mons. It's, it's a good speed tier to have. It's pretty good. Next up, Diglett. Does it go in A plus tier or S tier? It's just so good in every single generation. It's so hard to, to not use it. And it even got some more upgrades because of Terra type. Uh, so, from generation 8 to 9, it got Rock Blast. It also got Sword Stance and Stone Edge, but Rock Blast is the big one because you get a Counter League Surskit. So that's pretty nice. You can do Terra type Flying, so that way you avoid other trapping. You can do Terra type Ice. So that way you have a really nasty combination to hit your opponents with. You can do Terra type Dark. So that way you resist Sucker Punch, boost your own Sucker Punch. It's got a lot of flexibility. And because of Arena Trap, your opponent can't switch, so they're just sort of stuck. You also have a more bulkier variant with Stealth Rock. You can run Protect, so that way you're not hit by priority moves. Such as First Impression from Nimble. Also scout out what Choice Scarfers are going to do. Pretty good time. It's really hard to say that it's bad, despite its really weird stat line. It's got just enough attack and this great speed stat that it's just so useful all the time. It's very funny. <laughs> I'm not sure if it should deserve S tier, just because it's got bad matchups versus Toad School and... Ghastly. Maybe... I'll keep it an A plus here. I'll see how I feel about it later. Next up, Floon. Floon's weird. Because, like, in some matches, it's, like, an A. But in other matchups, it's, like, a B because of how it works. Uh, I'll split the difference. I'll go A- minus tier. It's still really good. The reason why it's good is because you have Orenberry plus Unburden. Speed is doubled on Held Item Lost. And that means that, combined with your 17 speed tier, you get up to 34. And that's just by existing. You also have Acrobatics, which can be boosted. That's really nice. will o wisp has good team support. Terra Blast Fighting to break over Pawniard. You also have Destiny Bond, if you want to run that. I think overall, the main issue with it is just... It's very frail because it doesn't have Eviolite, and you really want to have the Unburden boost. If you're running Aftermath and running a more Eviolite bulky set, it's really hard to justify. I'm just remembering a really cool... Oh, I have to see if I can find that one. There was a really interesting Drifling set. I'll have to find it. I want to say it was by Baby Boy Blues, but I'm not sure. Cripes, I need to find that one. Because what happened in it is that somebody ran a 
Scarf Drifloon with Flare Boost. Terra Flying. And then you had Terra Blast in one of your slots. And then I'm, I'm not sure what, what else was there. But it was such a cool set. Because you could just take a Will-O-Wisp from something like Fue Coco if you wanted to. Larvesta, Ghastly. And then you just start sweeping with it. It was so crazy. Where was it? No. I think I lost it. Where is it? What, was it Watt Rolls, or was I thinking of something else? Watt Rolls, please tell me it was Watt Rolls. Uh, was it... I want to say it was Gold Ghost, right? KSG. Please tell me it was KSG. It was! Please tell me it was! Alright, yeah, it's, it's fine. Toad. I just got so excited and it's not even going to be here. Oh, come on! Did it even do anything in this game? Was it just clean? This could still be a scarf one. Funnily enough. Seems like it. Oh, and then you just went, okay. Crap, I'll have to find that replay somewhere. But somebody has helped with it. It was so good. It was Cork! Come on. No, no, no. Come on. Don't do this to me. This it was Cork, wasn't it? Yes! <laughs> Found it! Cork, you beautiful bastard. Yes! Oh, It's so good. It speaks to how flexible <laughs> Drifloon is. Also, a great predict here. He's like, oh yeah, he's gonna stealth rock. It's fine. <laughs> I'll just go for it. Oh. Such a good set. It's got a lot of flexibility as a result. So that's why it's getting a minus tier. The the main issue is that you need to have the Ornberry, so it could be a bit of a liability, but having oh so you're the only viable defogger in the tier. It doesn't get any higher though, because it has a bad matchup versus some stuff, but I think A minus is really good for Drifloon. Next up is Fungus. This is Cripes, is it B plus? Cripes, the, the hard part about Fungus is that it's, that Toad School is just everywhere and it's really hard to justify it. It's still good, I'll put it in B plus. The reason why is because it's got Regenerator plus a really bulky spread. Also it has Poison Typing so it can remove T-Spikes, it has Spore Support, and it can take a whole bunch of punishment. It's oh, like it's really good, but the main issue is just that while Toad School exists, there are better poison types to be ran, such as Marionette. Plus, you get trapped by Gothita, so it's really hard to justify. But with that being said, it's really good defensively. It's a good man. It's a really good mon. But it's just more of opportunity cost. Like it'll lose to like Drifloon. It can't wall Crabrawler, which was a really nice niche that it had in the previous generations of just like oh, well, I can just wall the fighting types. It's all totally okay. Deerling can be really annoying if it gets enough Zen headbutts. So there's that. So I, I think that's pretty alright for it. It's it's not too high, not too low. Fue Coco is up next. They also have nice 2D sprites. I didn't realize that they actually got that one in, until today. Be minus, like, the issue with Fue Coco is that it's very defensive and it's very hard to justify as a fire type defensive mon. It's weird. But what it's supposed to do is that it's a anti setup sweeper mon. It's got unaware. It's got will o wisp. It's got roar. You keep itself healthy with slack off. You have flamethrower as a nice stab. The main issue is just that it's very very passive, and if at any point it gets knocked off, it's completely ruined. Because like this defensive stat is not bad. 59, 67 HP is pretty good too. It's just not where you want it to be. Is the issue? It needs to have more, and it's also kind of slow. It's a bit of a momentum sink. And I think that it gets outclassed by Grievert, funnily enough. But, eh, it's, it's still got a niche because, like, you get a block setup sweepers. Like, you can deal with Kerbrawler significantly more easily if you can just roar it out. It's like, oh, well, it's gonna will o -wisp me. Uh, I don't care about that. You're just gone. Get out of here. I'm gonna roar you out. So, pretty nice as a result. Next up is Ghastly and, yeah, uh, Undisputed S tier. Undisputed. It's, it's so good in all these applications. Oh, my lord. Uh, do I have... 
Oh, actually, yes, I can go over this one. It also is a good example of what Surskit does. But... Cripes. Uh, but yeah, it's got a lot of flexibility in its moveset, because for whatever reason, you can just run Taunt on it, it's A-OK. -okay. You also have Will-O-Wisp. It's an unfortunate icy one miss. But, uh, the point is, Ghastly has a lot of flexibility in its moveset, because if I go to the Team Builder, you have, like, this more bulky one. Hex, Sludge Bomb, Will-O-Wisp, Dark Pulse. You don't have to run Dark Pulse, you can run, like, uh, Terror Blast Fighting. You can run Thunderbolt, that kind of stuff. But then you also have a Life Orb set that you can use as a breaker. You also have a Choice Scarf set, which is nice because you are really, really fast on baseline, and that means that you outspeed all other Scarfers, which is really nice. Also, Pursuit doesn't exist, so that's all really, really cool to have. As a result, it's got a lot of really good matchups. It's really insane. It's better than Drifloon overall because it's more threatening immediately. It doesn't get trapped by Diglett because it's a ghost and it has Levitate. It has a good matchup versus Crabrawler, barring Terrifier. It can deal with Deerling. It doesn't have a bad matchup versus Fungus. It can deal with Bramble Gas. Well, Bramblin, not Bramble Gas. That's the evolution. It can deal with Bramblin okay ish. It, it has to be. Like, Bramblin has Shadow Sneak. It prevents setup sweepers because it's really. It's either going to hit you really hard with the Life Orb set or it's going to burn you. It's got so many applications despite its really weird defenses. But it's got a bunch of special attack, really good speed. It's so hard to deal with sometimes, and you have to deal with it. Really good mon! Next up, Glimit. I... It's definitely A, but is it A or A minus? Cripes. The reason why it's really good is because it has the signature ability Toxic Debris. If this Pokemon is hit by a physical attack, Toxic Spikes are set on the opposing side. So... What that means is that if any point you take a stray U-turn or a weak physical hit, you just set up Toxic Spikes for free and your opponent has to play around it now. It's really, really good as ability. It's really, really, really good. And then also in addition to that, uh, your special attack's 105. <laughs> Why? I mean, that, that's stronger than Ghastly. That's, that's stronger than the Tier King Ghastly. Why? You also have a whole bunch of hazard support. You have Stealth Rocks. You got Spikes. You also have Mud Shot to deter setup sweepers, and then you have a really good stab combination, Sludge Bump, Power Gem. Pretty cool. But the issue is just that it's not... Like, it gets trapped by Diglett really easily. Gothita likes coming in on seeing it. So... It's... Oh, this is a really good Drifloon check, isn't it? But it's just really good at warding off physical attackers. It's such a good matchup versus a lot of hyper offense teams if they aren't running a grounded poison because like oh well, I just I can use this as a sacrifice go and take a hit and then I just set up toxic spikes and then I still have momentum in my favor. But is it? Hmm. I'll leave it there. If I feel differently about it later, I'll, I'll change it. But I think that's fine. Got theta. Uh. It's like A tier because it doesn't fit on every team, but also it's BAM worthy. I hate it. Hmm. I think it was. No. What did I see BC Phase this week? Was it really? Really? Oh, yes. Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. That's why I put Survive GG. Uh, also, this is a good demonstration of how Founders, Founders are really good. Fairy Balance immediately dies. Okay, but the important part here is at the very end. It's, it's called Cringe Mod. It's kind of funny. Uh, but Bronzer comes in, and then Sunky comes in. Yeah. And the reason why KSG says, I survived, is because uh, he tricks the, the Bronzer here, and then uh, this just wins. It just calm mines up infinitely, and then just sweeps the entire team. Also, this really heads up play. It's a nice one. <laughs> yeah, it just, just gets it back. It's it's all A-OK, -okay, and then he wins because of it. It's very, 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 very terribly unhealthy. I hate this mon. Please, just let it let it leave. It's significantly more broken than Diglett, even though Diglett is a higher tier. It's... Diglett's better because it has more applications over the course of a game, 
Whereas Gothit is much more of Feast or Famine, I either sweep or I don't, and then also you can just trap some bulkier mons because they can't kill you. And that's really annoying to deal with. So there's that. Ah, uh, but it's, it's still only A tier because it's got limited defensive utility. And it needs the choice scarf almost outspeed things. But it's so, so annoying to deal with. Oh, I hate it. Next up, Griever, the goodest boy. I want him to put I want to put him in A minus tier, but I'm not sure if he's that good. Is he? Oh, where's the Voltix game? Is it? There it is. No, that's not it. I'm Where is it? Oh, there it is. I'm Why am I like this? Uh but if I go near the end here, uh Actually, I can just go here. Uh, Grievar just... It just stuffs setup sweepers because it can. <laughs> and it's a really good spin blocker. It's got Fluffy as an ability. You can just yawn spam annoy your opponent's team really badly. It's fun. Uh, but then I also want to go to the, the end here. Because... That only does 13%. And it's an ice punch. And then you think, oh, well, you know, it's just going to boost up. It'll do a whole bunch of damage in a moment. It's, it's going to be terrible. Uh, no, it doesn't even do... <laughs> It's such a good boy. It just takes so many attacks. Ah, uh, he's his best boy. Is does, does it deserve a minus though? Is the question. Oh, it's, you want to see a crazy calc real quick? Hold on. <laughs> so, Weasel Rain Wallbreaker versus Grievard, a bulky spin blocker in rain when this is Terra Water. It doesn't even do fifty percent. Uh, yes, I think it deserves a minus here. It was very often slept on in Giraffric meta because Giraffric could just twin beam it and they would do a whole bunch of damage and ruin the defensive utility. But it's just got such a wonderful matchup versus so many physical attackers as a result of its fluffy ability. And then you also have Rest, you have Roar, so that way you can do some annoying stuff. You have Yawn, and you have really good coverage moves. Oh, no. oh I gotta bring this one up. So there was... Oh, my lord. Uh, Evito brought a very strange team. A, a very strange team. And if you're wondering how strange, uh, well, it's, uh, this limit is Terra Ghost. It's also Toxic Corrosion. Sleep Talk Spikes. And also, in order to make sure that the spikes stayed up, he brought a Grievard. And the Grievard is very funny. I think it finally gets the turns when it's used. Like, I don't even know how it's possible to make stall in Little Cup, but Avito somehow managed to do it. It's... Frankly absurd. Get me to the... Come on. Come on now. It's... Oh. Yep, so Grievar comes on in. Takes the knock. That's all fine. It's got Fire Fang. It's got Fang coverage moves, so you're going to use that. Shellos comes on in. Thinking, oh, I can wear this down. Deals a good amount of damage and gets a special defense trap. It's rest talk. It just takes hits like it's nobody's business. And it just somehow works. Yeah, it just takes that and then, uh, yeah. Uh, I also have sleep talk roar. <laughs> you ever just look at a team and just be like, I, I don't, how did... That, that's what this team was. Griever gets a minus. Hatena, it gets a C tier. Uh, where's the ace game? What the? I'm not gonna ask what that was. It's fine. Oh ah, yes. So ace game, a little bit continuation off from where this is. All right, it's a bit of a mistake, but he still wins it because he has. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Ghastly sack. Healing wish scarf. Hatena, it has a niche as a result, and I mean, it's gotten a tournament result, like this little, like literally one ace the game. Otherwise, he would have just died, and then that would have been it. So, yeah. Really cool. Uh, this was the set that I think that he used. He has a, he has a video on this one. It's probably linked in the description. Probably should. Ace is a cool dude, it makes good content. But you can run something like this. Healing Wish is pretty nice. I'm not sure the Terra-type. It might have been Terra-type Fire. Something right those lines, but 
Fast healing, which is pretty nice. You have magic bounce for additional defensive utility, which can be nice for keeping hazards off of your side of the field. The main issue is that your stat line's kind of bad. So. But it's usable. It's been used in tournament, and it got a win as a result. So, there you go. Hippo. Maybe another D tier? Possibly C tier? Maybe. The, the main issue is that it's just very passive. And as we'll see coming up, there's Sandy Gas, and I think it just wholly outclasses it. But it's got Recovery, it's got Rocks, it's got a Stab Earthquake, which is really valuable. And then you have Ice Fang, or other Fangs as coverage. You want to run Fire Fang. You have Thunder Fang, right? Yeah, you have Thunder Fang, too. So that we can have Waters. You got a whole bunch of different stuff going on there. But the main issue is just you're very passive and not very fast. Oh, you have Yawn! Yes! So you can run stuff like that. It's not great, because you'd much rather have Sandy Gas or another Rocker that isn't this. But it still has uses. It still has uses. Uh, also, the issue is that if you're running only Earthquake, then you're just a liability versus Ghastly. You can run Crunch. That's all okay. But I think that you just don't have all of the tools that you want in the move slots that you have available. Whereas Sandy Gas can hit Ghastly with a Shadow Ball. Hippopotas really can't do much versus it. It's an issue. Fiend Houndor. If anybody's wondering why am I calling it that, uh, tier leader's named Fiend. He, he has Houndor in his profile picture. Hmm. Not gonna lie, that could go. This goes for like anywhere from like B to A minus. I think I'll put in P plus. The, the reason why it's pretty alright is. Squamax. Yes, this is that. So, OJR1 using Fiend Hound. It's a pretty nice check to Ghastly. It can also take. Yep, alright. So now we get to Houndor stuff. It, it's pretty decently bulky on the special side. You can run, like, double dance set. Uh, but then you also can take Ghastly's Dark type moves really well. I think it sweeps this entire game, doesn't it? I'm not sure why you would go to Toad School here, because it just drops to a plus two flamethrower, but... Uh, yeah, Pawniard doesn't even kill it, because it's got a Dark Resistance. It's really good as a sweeper, and it can be used kind of defensively. <laughs> really, I don't. A team six up by this. Every Terra is stealing grass, and then Ninja Dog, the the manager, is like, "You started this game within two minutes of me setting the pace. <laughs> Come on now." Uh, I think Quaxley takes one. No, it doesn't matter. But the point is, it's got a lot of useful offensive utility. And then even if you go to Team Builder, it's got Early Bird. It's got Flash Fire, which can be really good for punishing Will O Wisps from Ghastly. Your opponent has to have a Fire Resist, otherwise it's going to sweep them. You can run, as in the JCBC game, you could run a... Actually, I'm going to just reset. You can just run a Scarf set as well, because it gets up to 17 speed. That's always really valuable, so that's pretty cool. Uh, its main issue is this, that it's very frail. I don't know the spread, but this is more of a guesstimation. Uh, but, like, it's got a lot of good coverage moves. Crunch, Dark Pulse, Destiny Bond is a good fourth move, which almost won JCBC that game. Flame Charge, so that way you can do the Double Dance stuff, you have Nasty Plot, Overheat, Eject Pack, because you have Thief, Psychic Fang, Sludge Bomb, Trail Blaze. you got a whole bunch of stuff going on, but the main issue is just, you're very frail, if you look at the stat line. 30 Defense, you got good spe Special Attack, 80, some good attack and good speed stat, but you're just kind of frail. So, it's something to keep on, on your radar of what to use, but I wouldn't consider it top tier by any, me any measure. Impidemp. I think that gets up to, like, B+. Plus. The main issue that it had in Giraffe Rig meta is that Giraffe Rig physical sets would run Psychic Fangs, and then that would just be it, so... Excuse me. And, like, it, Psychic Fangs removes screens, and the one thing that Impidemp has going for it is Reflect and Light Screen. It also has the addition of Parting Shot, and then even if you're going into a Dark type in order to be able to take the Parting Shot, because it's Prankster, uh, you just use Drain Punch, and then it KOs Pawniard and deals with Zorua, that kind of stuff. 
Oh, you can also do Terra type Ghosts, so that way you can blank Brick Breaks. It's really annoying to deal with, but I think it's a bit of a liability as a result of, like, it needs the team support. But it's not bad by any stretch of the imagination. I just haven't seen any, like, big tournament results with it lately. Kind of weird. Next up, Larvesta. It's in a really awkward spot. Hmm... No, I think I'll keep it in B. The reason why is that in, in even if we look at Yep, this current one, Larvesta is at B tier. Reason for that is it's got a good defensive use, but it just dies to rocks. There's no other way to put it. It just dies to rocks. Flare Blitz U-turn, Lewis, Morning Sun is a really good moveset, but Bug Fire dying to rocks is really bad. <laughs> it's annoying to deal with. It can be a bad MU, but as soon as you get rocks up, Larvesta just becomes so much easier to deal with. And it's really easy to spin block in the metagame, where we have Drifloon, Grievard, and Ghastly. It's really hard to get hazards off, so unless you're running, like, Floon with Defog, which I think is already a pretty big liability, because then you're also weak to rocks. You don't want to have your hazard clearer weak to hazards, so... It's not bad, because you can still do some stuff, like you can have a Tree Scarf set, and it can be really annoying to deal with, because it's got a good stat line. Uh, but the main issue is just, it's very fragile, despite the fact that it's supposed to be a defensive Pokemon. So, you need a lot of hazard support and something to build around. And I don't think it's really, it's not very good versus Ghastly. Crabrawler can kind of 1v1 it sometimes. If it's slow, Diggly can trap it. It hates, it hates Gloomin existing, because if it attacks into it, then it sets up T-Spikes, and then hates seeing Stealth Rock. It's pretty unfortunate. It's not great. Not great at all. Next up, Magnemite. Where is this? Yeah, I think A-Tier is a solid place for this. The reason being, it's it's got a Choice Scarf Analytic set. It's got a good amount of bulk. 70 defense, 55 battle defense. It's... Speed is serviceable enough as a Scarfer, and it just hits really hard. It doesn't have to worry about ground types anywhere near as much because it's got Terra Blast Ice, which is really, really good coverage because Thunderbolt plus Ice Beam has been a standard for many a generation. Really hard to deal with. Then you have Volt Switch from Momentum. Flash Cannon is really good steal. Type move to just throw out, so there's that kind of stuff. Pretty nice. There's not too much to say about it. It's just good overall. Next up is Makahita. It's put on this list because it has knockoff, but I think it's really bad. The main reasons is, uh, look at this stat line. It's terrible. It's got no bulk. It's got no defenses. <laughs> Add Vine Boom in it. I don't, I don't have an editor. Or like Vine Boom, no defense. Vine Boom, no special defense. Vine Boom, no speed. It's like, oh, well, it's got HP. It's like, yeah, but it's not really worthwhile. You have knockoff, but that doesn't make you actually all that good. You have Bullet Punch, which is good priority, Drain Punch, and then Earthquake. And you can't be walled, but, like, you're just not doing anywhere near as much damage. And you get immediately outclassed by stuff like Mankey. Wow, how funny how that works out. I think Mankey's A- minus tier. It's got a lot of good coverage moves. Close Combat, U-Turn, Earthquake, Ice Punch. You can also run Night Slash. That kind of stuff. And you have a really good speed tier. You have a higher attack set than Makuhita. And you can do a really strong close combat in your opponent, and they don't want to see it at all. It's really hard to wall. Really fast, and has u turns so that it can gain momentum. It's a good mod to have. There's no real complaints about it. It's just really solid as a mod. So. Marion is next up. Do I put it in A minus or B plus? Like in some matchups, it's like A+, plus because it just walls the entire team and they can't break over it. And in some matchups, it's like B, because it gets trapped by Gothita or Diglett, and it's just terrible. I'll keep it in A-. I think that's okay. How it works is that it just doesn't die. It's like Toxic Pex in the OU tiers, except not as good, because its defensive stats aren't as great. But all you really do is just take a whole bunch of the attacks because of your high defense. You take... You take special attacks pretty well as well. But you just don't die. You have Regenerator. You have Recover. You have Surf Sludge Bomb. You can run Haze if you want to. But then there's also Toxic Spikes. Good team support. You can run Ice Beam as well. So that way you can hit Toad. It's got a lot of stuff going for it. And then you can run Terra Type Goat. Water is standard. 
excuse me. You can also run Terra type Ghost, so that way you can avoid trapping from Gothita and Diglett. But it's a bit of a liability. This is the kind of stuff of why I want Gothita gone, because Marini has to run a very suboptimal Terra type just so that we, you don't get 6 0 So there's that. Next up is the Ugly Dog. I don't. I'm not really sure where this goes. I really don't know. Like, yeah, you pair up well versus Ghastly and you have Stakeout. I'll put it in B minus. Uh, what it does is that it has Stakeout, so the offensive stat is doubled against a target that switched in this turn, and that can hit really, really hard. You have some good coverage moves because you got Fangs. You have Player Up for hitting fighting types. You have Crunch's good stab, Psychic Fangs for fighting types. Was it back to that? Well, why do you have, why do you have both Player Up and Psychic Fangs? No, Psychic Fangs is also for the poisons. Forget about that. And then you have Terra type Fairy, so that way you don't have to worry about fighting type moves. Its main issue is just that it's not very. It's kind of mediocre, unfortunately. It's got a good attack stat and good. Like, it's got serviceable speed, but it needs the scarf. And. It might just be undiscovered. You don't really see it being brung all that often, is the thing. It just doesn't have too much going for it besides stakeout, plus some good coverage moves, so. Could be better, could be worse, we'll have to see. Meowth Galar. Um, it'll also go in B minus tier. It just sort of deserves to mention. Also, while we're at it, I'll put Meowth here. But uh, what it does is just that it, it's a stealth rocker with U-turn. It also has tough claws, so that way it can be a bit annoying to switch into. But you like U-turn fake out, Iron Head Stealth Rock. It's okay. It has an H because it's a steel type and it can set up rocks and then that'll open up your team builder so that way you don't have to worry about having another rock on your team. Uh, but then we have regular Meowth and regular Meowth is significantly better as a result of a better matchup versus current tier king Ghastly. You can run Assurance. Oh, it's 60 base power. Huh. Uh, you can run Assurance and then you can punish some switch-ins really nicely. You have Fake Out and Faint boosted by Technician. So, this is 60 base power, this is 45, you can also do Terra type normal to boost them even further. You have life orb and plus a low HP stat, so that we can run that pretty reliably. You have U-turn, so that way you can escape or get momentum if your punch tries to switch in on you. It's a bit of a liability though, because you have stuff like Glimit, or like, the, the, the ghosts are just really good at walling it. But... With that being said, Assurance versus Ghastly is really nice to have. And you have it speed it, and you blank Shadow Ball, so. If you run, if you could run both of these on the same team, that might be pretty interesting. Also, I don't know Meowth spreads, so if this is wrong, please correct me out in the comments. Next up, we have Mudbray. I am so tempted to put this boy in A-plus tier. But is he worth it? So, if you're wondering what it does, it has Stamina... And it's got really good stat line for a little cup. 70 defense, 70 HP, 55 special defense is fantastic. And then also, as you see with investment, it gets a higher special defense stat than defense. Really good. And there's so limited knockoff in the metagame, so it just takes a bunch of hits. Can keep itself healthy with rest, and then can sleep talk to get either of Earthquake or Heavy Slam. I think... Was it... I could have sworn that I gave somebody a team and that they had this, and then they won with it. Oh, was it Voltix? Come on now. I swear it was Voltix, right? It wasn't. Cripes. Is it... What's the other one? Oh, Splash. That's what I'm thinking of. Well, that was me being dumb. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Did I pass that with a splash? I might have. Why am I like this? Ah! Well, uh, point is, it's really, really bulky and can take a whole bunch of hits really, really easily. Because it's got Earthquake, Heavy Slam, Rest, Sleep Talk, and then a whole bunch of really good stats. Next one! Do I want to put that... I, I think I'll move it down to A. Uh... It actually has multiple sets now think about it. Because it's got a Stealth Rock set, Earthquake, Heavy Slam, Close Combat. It's got good coverage moves. You can set up rocks. It can be a Sleep Talker. You still have Stamina, so you can be really nice. But also you are ground, so you have that defensive utility. Um, hmm. 
I'll put it in A tier. That's kind of fine for it. Numble is weird. I'll put it in B+. Plus. It's a weird double dance sweeper. What it's supposed to do is because it has the ability Simple, which doubles your stat changes, you can run Growth plus Flame Charge. I don't know. Why does this get Growth? I don't know. But what it does is that it uses Flame Charge so that way it gets essentially an agility boost. It's twice as fast, so it goes from 14 to 28. And then you have Growth, which gives you a plus 2 to special attack, plus 2 to attack, and then you can just start sweeping your opponent, and it's really hard to deal with. It's good. I think I saw it sweep some teams, but I'm not... I don't remember any teams off... Not teams. Games off the top of my head where it swept some stuff, but... It's good. It's good. It's just kind of funny to think, like, oh yeah, it's Nummel. It's just as very weird as a stat spread. It's not a terrible bulk, actually, now that I think about it. With that being said, it's pretty alright. And then you have Terra-type Grass to shore up your water weakness. You can do Terra-type Water probably, right? Probably. You can figure that sort of stuff out in, in Builder. But it can be really dangerous as a sweeper if you're not expecting it. It's very funny. Next up is Nimble, and unfortunately, John Dark Souls has fallen off. I can probably put it in B tier. The reason, the reason why it fell off is because Gas is currently the tier king, and it has a significantly harder time doing whatever it wants because now ghosts are sort of everywhere. Grievart is such a fantastic check to it. Do I have... That's that one, that's that one. Where's the... Not that one. Oh, no, actually this one. So if I go... Here, do you just sort of... Okay. I have to figure out, like, because Nimble comes in on this, I think. Or... Doesn't it? Oh, okay. I forgot that it just kills Glimmet. Oopsie. Uh, but yeah, Pontiac comes in. It just kills that. And where are we on again? Oh, yes, Nimble. I'm sorry, my old man dimension's acting up again. Reason being, uh, it's very hard to justify in this metagame when there's a whole bunch of ghosts going around. Mer can check it, Grievard can check it, Drifloon can check it, Glimit can check it really well because then it sets up toxic spikes. Pony, well, not Pony, uh, Torbrawler can check it. Pony can check it. I'm just thinking this out loud. Mag can check it. It gets trapped by Diglett. Oh, actually, uh... It can still put in a lot of work, even in, like, week one. I just have to get to my game. Yes, okay. Uh, but if I keep on going... Uh, yep. So... Oh. Why am I on the other side? I'm not gonna ask questions like that. Uh, but yeah, the rest of comes in, and then Leech Life. It's not even bad, because it can do some really good progress versus Larvesta, but the issue is just that you get trapped, and then you don't really want to have that as a revenge killer. So, it's a bit of a liability, but it's not bad. Like, first impression is still very valuable. Next up, Pawniard. Uh, a plus tier. There's, there's no real disputing that. Pawniard is just really, really good all the time. It's got Stealth Rock, you can run Sword Stance instead of Stealth Rock if you want, depending upon your team structure. You can run Terra Blast Flying if you want, Terra Blast Brick Break Sucker Punch, you have Night Slash as well. And you also have a really good stat line, you get up to 16 speed, which is good, you have a good attack stat, you have a good defense stat, you can take a whole bunch of hits, it's all A-OK. -okay. Next up, we have... There's... <laughs> I know, it's like, oh, why are you going past Pawnier? It's one of the best mods in the tier. It's, it's just like... It's so good all the time that it's really hard to be like, ah, uh, yes, the very contentious take the Pawniard, which even in Giraffe Rig meta uh, was was A-plus tier, is, is also still A-plus tier when it has a good matchup versus Ghastly without terrestrialization. Wow. Pineco. I don't know where to put this. Straight up, like... In theory, it checks Toad... It has some pretty good utility because it's a rapid spinner. It has payback so that we can punish ghosts. It has stealth rocket spikes, talking spikes. You can do stab bug bite stuff to be or to eat orin berries off of things to be annoying. You have explosion so that we can use a suicide lead. Like, I'll put it in C tier because like theoretically it can go like B if it wants to because it can take a whole bunch of hits. It's a really good fungus check. And it can do some really annoying things to mess with some Pokemon, but... 
I don't think it's. I just don't think it's overall very useful. Even though it's got overcoat, it's got a good attack stat, it's got good defense. It's just very weird. Uh, Whoop Paldea, otherwise known as Pooper. Uh, I don't like it. It's it's kind of bad if I'm being honest. I'll put that in D. The main reason why it's even there is because people thought it was really cool and fun to use. But I think the main issue is just that Marion E exists. So why would you ever want to use Whooper when it's got some pretty awful base stats? I know a lot of people like Wooper, and I'm not I'm not saying that you're, you shouldn't like Wooper. What I am saying is that it's got 210 base stat total, and it's it's frankly pretty awful as a result. So, sorry. Also, you have a bad matchup versus Ghastly. Do you even have anything to hit it? I don't think. So if the answer to that was no, and that's really bad, Gunk Shot's resisted... Earthquake misses because it's levitate. It's it lets in the tear king, and that's not really good for it at all. Like okay, yeah, cool. It can set up hazards, but it's not really valuable. Next up is Psyduck. It goes into B plus tier, but also with that being said, Buizel I think is just overall superior because it doesn't need to be on a rain team. It's got Swift Swim. It's got nasty plot from this generation, which is really nice to have. So you can sweep, and it's got some utility there, but it's not fantastic. It's, it's just got very limited stuff going on. Like, yeah, okay, you get a 30 speed, you got a good special attack style, and all sorts of stuff. But it's just kind of mid, because you need it on rain teams. It's good on rain teams, but that's just sort of like the only utility you have out of it, so. Very bleh. Not bad, but not great either. <sighs> the poor... M Look at this man! I don't, I don't really like how this how the sprite looks, if I'm being honest. But also, it's kind of indicative of how in... In previous meta, he was A tier. Wonderful. I think that he generally drops to B tier. It's it's really, really bad. <laughs> really, really, really bad. Hold on. <clears throat> Reason being, uh, it just has four moves slot syndrome, and you literally die to Ghastly super hard. It stuffs your rapid spin. It burns you with Will O' Wisp, and if it's not rid of that set, it can hit you with a Thunderbolt, at which point you die. It's just so hard to justify because if you want to run Quaxley, you also have to run Fungus, and that's just asking for trouble from Gothita. If Gothita didn't exist, it'd be better, but like from B to like bottom of B plus better. It's just so hard to use. But also, that being said, it still has the niche of Rapid Spin plus Moxie. And then you can still be really annoying with Encore. You keep yourself healthy with Roost. You don't have a bad stat spread by any stretch of the imagination. It's just so bad currently. Just because of how good Toad is. Ugh. I feel bad for the little duck over here. He just can't catch a break. <laughs> uh, next up, Ryolu. It's put on there. I think I'll, put this, I'll just put it in the seats here. It's like... It has a niche, but it's also, like, not very good. All it really can do, to my knowledge, is just Damp Rock Prankster, and then you can do Rain Dance. It's an alternative to Voltorb on Rain Teams, specifically, so that way, like, oh, well, I don't want to have... Oh, actually, I think that was... I think that was this week, so... It wasn't? Was it week one, then? It might have been week one. What week was it? Hold on. Oh, it was Elfu. That's what I'm, I'm thinking of Elfu. That's my bad. So what what I'm talking about is in this matchup, Elfu has a really good time because he just leads off with Mankey versus Voltorb, and then Voltorb immediately dies. So in order to prevent this specific scenario where you have to go into one of your prankster mons or just die. Uh, you can run Ryolu instead of Voltorb. I don't recommend it because it's very lackluster outside of just Rain Dance stuff, and I don't think that you can do too, too much. Like, Copycat plus Rain Dance is pretty cool, but that's kind of it, so it's eh. So it's C tier. Sandile's weird? Like, this is definitely the most polarizing mod, I think, on the list. Like, with a lot of them, like, oh, yeah, you can get, you know, like, Gothita's good. Grievard might be, like, B, but it's like, oh, well, you know, it's still an understandable placement. Whereas, like, Sandile literally goes from, like, C tier in some matchups to, like, A plus tier in others, and it's really hard to say. 
Because, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you lose... Really hard versus Mudbrain, Kerbrawler, but like you deal with Ponyard, you deal with Glimit, you're a good like. It's just so weird because like, good versus Ponyard and Ghastly, bad versus, uh, Kerbrawler, but then you're like good, 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 bad, bad, good, mid, bad, good, uh, mid, kind, okay, terrible versus Rain. I could kind of deal with this. All right, uh. Deals is fine. Uh, bad doesn't let this get set up for free unless you predict wrong, which can be annoying. Bad versus rain. It's just so all over the place. And the reason for why I'm like, why isn't it just like, oh, it has such good matchup. Why isn't it just like on the top? Uh, it's got really bad defensive bulk. <laughs> it's got a good speed tier, and then you can do some moxie stuff to be really annoying as a sweeper. And then you have some good coverage because you've been in here for... I want to say 5, yeah, because you're in Gen 5, Gen 6, Gen 7, Gen 8, Gen 9. I don't remember if you're in Gen 8, but point is you've been around for 5 generations. You, you have some stuff in your toolkit. But the reason why it's kind of weird is just because the limited defensive utility is what really kills it, despite its really good typing. If it had, like, 10 more in each of its defenses, I would be more comfortable putting it in, like, a, a minus tier just because it can be, like, a really good sweeper. But I just don't think it's too good with a lot of other stuff. It's just lackluster defensive utility. Despite the fact it's got a really good matchup versus a lot of stuff, which is funny. Uh, but with that being said, uh, you can use it as a choice scarf sweeper if you want. I don't recommend it. There's better scarfers out there. But it still has a good niche as, oh, well, I want to snowball in the end game. There you go. Uh, Sandy Gast, I mentioned it before when there was the hippo section. It gets like... B minus? It's still better. I think it's better than Hippo. Because you don't have to worry about... Well, two reasons. A, you're a ghost type, so you can have Stab Shadow Ball, which can be really annoying to switch into. Second, you're a Stealth Rocker that also spin blocks for itself, which is exceedingly valuable. Three, you're actually a really nice water check because you could just use Water Compaction plus the Terra type, and then you just straight up don't die. So that's fun. Hippo is a lot worse at it because, like, okay, cool, let's switch it into, like, a Buizel, and then it takes like 10 million. And so there's a whole bunch of damage, it's just really hard to deal with, even if you reset weather. And then also you're using Hippopotas against a lot of other matchups, it's just really, really bad. This is a lot more utility outside of those matchups. Uh, the reason why it's bad is because although it's a ground type and a ghost type, it's just got a lot of lackluster stuff going on. Like, Glimit can kind of deal with it. It's very passive, you let in Gothita, you let in Mudbray. Dealing just sort of really, really deals with you too well. Uh, crab, you can't wall Crab because it's got Ice Punch. Ghastly can really easily just kill you. Pawnee can kill you. But you've got some pretty nice, decent matchups, like lower down. And being able to have a rocker that can spin block for itself is pretty valuable. Next up, Shelder. Shelder's a goat. I'm, put, I'm putting this in A minus tier. I don't care what people say. I have won way too many games with this to say in any any sort of way that it's bad it was really fun to use too and my wi-fi is crapping out okay wonderful so no replace for the rest of this i should have the other one oh i do have it up all right we okay uh but point is uh i can sweep this entire team with a shelter if my opponent is not prepared for it and also uh actually rookie calc so we have voltorb pivot versus shelter uh, Shelter can't kill this at plus two normally, because Liquidation is a roll, which is really, really risky. Rock Blast is also a roll, but if it's Terra Ice, well, I just killed Rock Blast and it's LA okay. So, uh, what I did there was just force the Terra with Diglett, set up Rock so that way nothing can really block me afterwards. And then, uh, also, cool note on why Zara was also really good. Uh, it just takes a crit like it's nothing on one HP then can use Memento, and then I do some really fun stuff of just like, oh yeah, I just set up Shelter on a Voltorb despite the fact that it's a terrible matchup, because I can just do Terra Rock, take the Thunderbolt, Shell Smash, and win the game. <laughs> it's It can really, really easily sweep a whole bunch of stuff. It's great. A minus tier, and that's also why like Toodle's down there. Rock Blast is really good stab. The main issue with it is that it doesn't have Icicle Spear anymore, and if it had that, it might actually be A. Maybe. Probably was like maybe top of A minus. The main issue was like it doesn't it doesn't have ice uh, ice spear anymore, 
which was really nice with Skill Link, so you could just sweep teams and it was whatever. So that's kind of that's kind of a yikes. So unfortunate, but that's just how it is. But I've won way too many games to say that this is anywhere below an A minus. Shellos, I want that also an A minus. It's got some really good defensive capabilities. There should be one run one of these replays, right? There we go. Uh, I'm pretty sure Splash won this one as well. Uh, but if I... Oh, this is Terra Preview. Meowth versus Crabrawler. Oh no, PNG broken! Uh, Ghastly... Shellos East. It just comes in on Pawnyard. Can eat any of the attacks because of how bulky it is. And then it can set up Stealth Rock because it's got that bonus from this generation. I'm not sure why my Wi-Fi is deciding that today is a bad day to work, but... I'm, I'm just gonna have to deal with it. I mean, also, you just take neutral attacks really well. Like, that's Meowth. That's not gonna... That's not, like, that's not, like, useless. Oh, yeah, also, you can run Surf Clear Smog. That's actually pretty fun. You just take Status, you just kill the Ghastly here. And then Shiroko's really on the back foot. I think that... Oh, yeah, Splash just stays in really gutsy. Really nice. Really nice play. And then, yeah, just sweep with Magnemite, so okay. It can be really, really nice. Oh, boy, something's picking me. But, uh, I think it really deserves an A- tier, because it's got rocks. It's got recover. You can have Ice Beam plus Earth Power if you want to be really annoying. You have Surf plus Clear Smog. It can be really hard to deal with. Oh, also, its ability is really good. You can have it as a rain check with the water immunity, or you can make it not trap over Bulgaiathita with sticky hold, so that way it can't lose the Eviolite, meaning that's really good defensively. It's really good. I really like where this is going. And I think this probably is just going to get better as, it, as time goes on. Shrewdle. Like, B... You have a positive matchup versus Ghastly, and even if I go to like, oh well, this is this is the sample set. It's it's the rain, the rain support one because you have rain dance, and then you have parting shot. And you turn it knock off as good support moves, but then you can also do some stuff because you can use it as a sweeper. I've seen it used as like an Eviolite one where you just run an Eviolite here, and then you can still run Prankster, and then you just take a whole bunch of hits. You have Copycat here. Oh, I've also seen a Life Orb set because your HP stat is barely low enough, actually, uh, that you can run it, and then you can do knockoff, and then you can probably run the gunk shot here. But also, you're naturally kind of fast. You get up to 18, and then you can do copycat shenanigans with Prankster and be really, really set. It's pretty cool. I think overall it's very lackluster because, it, once again, if you look at the stat line, 35 defense is a good defensive Pokemon does not make, so it's very frail, unfortunately. Just going to have to deal with that, cope and see and all that. But it got potential. Uh, Sinist T, uh, it gets a C tier. I faced it once in bracket. Or not bracket. Uh, I don't think I... I don't have that one up. But it was my week two game. Uh, I faced it. It's it's okay. You can do some terrifying stuff, and then it can be a with weak armor, so that's pretty cool. But I think overall, it's just very disappointing. Terrible fighting is actually pretty good for it, though. I just don't see much defensive utility for it when there's so many better ghosts. You have Ghastly, Drifloon, Grievart, even Sandy Ghast. Pretty sure that was an Oh, Bramblin. Bramblin too. It's, it's really hard to justify. So. Uh, Slowpoke. C tier? Maybe? It's hard to say. Uh, because it's just very... The one thing that it really hates is that it doesn't have teleport anymore. It lost it in the generation transfer, and that's really, really bad for it. Because otherwise it could be a really cool pivot that would be really, really hard to break. But it can't do that anymore. It also still has Regenerator, so that's pretty cool. You have Grass, so that way you're not weak to, like, Toad stuff. Psychic Fire Blast Thunder Wave Slack Off. Pretty cool stuff that it can do, but it's it's just very worse off now that it doesn't have Teleport, and as a result, I'm putting it in, in C tier. If it had something, like... If it just had teleport or something, it would be so much better because then it's not just a momentum sink. Oh, very unfortunate. Snover is up next, and I think that can go into C tier. I made the set for it, and I think it has a niche, 
But it, it's got a bad matchup versus Ghastly currently, and it's really hard to justify as a result. But it's like, oh yeah, you can deal with Mudbray, you deal with Pawn. You might actually get walled by Gothita. That's bad. Uh, you can deal, you have good grass type matchups, and you can deal with it kind of well. And then because of the new snow warning, summoning snow as opposed to hail, which gives you a defense boost, it's interesting and different. But I'm not sure if it's really all that good. You still have the stealth rock weakness, so it's it's very weird. I wouldn't recommend running it currently. It's, I don't think it's good enough. Next up, oh, this is really hard. I think B plus. Stunky's kind of hard to place. I'll put in B+. The reason why is because it's got a really good matchup versus Ghastly and Pawniard. And you've got a pretty alright matchup versus Crabrawler. It depends on the set. You got, you can deal with Gothita pretty well. You deal with all the ghosts pretty well, honestly. It's just the main issue is that... I don't even have that one up, but uh, Baby Boy Blues kind of popularize this set of nasty plot stunky that can just sweep because I think you want to game with it it's really good I don't think I have no stu stunky wasn't this one. Oh yes yes that actually is the special defensive one yes it is but it's kind of awkward because your special attacks that's kind of bad so it's 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 all over the place kind of you can also run a life orb attacker if you want it's got some moveset flexibility and you have good matchups but I don't think it's particularly Great. It's got a good niche though. So B plus tier. Next up, Sir Skit. Uh I think I'll just put that in B plus. Its main utility is just set sticky web. Your opponent gets slowed down. It'll have and then you get a deal. Oh, do I I still have the Voltix game, right? Why do I keep doing this to myself not understanding where I put my things? Uh yes, yes I do. So the funny thing is, is that throughout the entirety of this game, uh, Voltix never sets Sticky Web, but still wins. It's pretty funny. Like, yeah, oh yeah, you get taunted, but then you still have Surskit's defensive utility over the course of the game. It does a lot of damage to Toad because of its coverage moves. It doesn't come in all that often, and it's pretty good as like a sack Pokemon, where if you need to... Oh, also, this is what kind of wins the game. Is that Surskit, because it has Icy Wind, it can slow down Kerbrawler, and that makes it in range of like, doing Ghastly shenanigans. And it forces it out, and it's all so much better as a result. It has a lot of utility because of the moveset that you can run. So, B plus tier. Tinka Tink is in B minus? I'm not. Yeah, Ace used it. And it's not bad but the issue i have with it is just that it's very weird to use because like you can still get rocks with it and you can still knock off stuff it's just like very disappointing if we look at the stat line its attack is pretty abysmal like at least with stunky it's just like oh well it's got a bad special attack set yeah but it can just use nasty plots whatever you can just boost up it's fine but with tank it's it just can't do much at all. Like, even player ups not going to be doing too much damage. There's not all that much stuff that you want to hit with it. And it's just very disappointing with its stat line. So. It, it has some usage, but I don't think it's particularly great, despite the fact it's got a really nice typing. It's pretty unfortunate. Next up, Toad School. It's, like, between A+, plus and S. I think I'll put it in S. It's way, way too fantastic. Like, if I just look at... Oh, look. This one has a Toad School. Both sides have a Toad School in this one. Because if we go to the reset... Like, oh, look, there's two Toad Schools. Uh, this one doesn't have... Actually, not Toad School game, huh? Both sides have Toad Schools in this one. Like, the point is, it's got a lot of really good traits that make it really hard to deal with. It's got... Grass ground typing, giving it immunity to spore and electric type moves. It has earth power as good stab. You have power whip, and then you have the combination of knockoff and rapid spin, which is really good because even though there's so many ghosts in the tier, uh, yeah, you just knock them off, remove their item, and then become significantly worse. And even in the case of Grievard, which can take it really easily, well, then you have something specially offensive to deal with it, such as earth power. If you want to, you can also run Giga Drain. And you also have Spike support, you have Mycelia Might, which means that even though your opponent may be running stuff like Overcoat uh, Vroom, my beloved, 
but like overcoat Varum, overcoat Pineco, you can still get through it. So it can be really hard to deal with this. And I've seen it win some games just because of how good its stab combination is at threatening the enemy team. So there's that. Uh, actually, speaking of Varum, it gets a, it gets a mention. I used it once. <laughs> I want to use it again, but also like it's just kind of bad. I want it to be good. It just needs to have, like in Ghastly Men, it's probably gonna do better. Uh, but it's a pivot because of parting shot, and then you just have to deal with Pawnier in some way. I don't remember the exact spread I used, but it was something like this. Uh, point is, uh, Varum could use Parting Shot and then can do a lot of damage because it has Zen Head, but Gunk Shot, Iron Head. And it was pretty alright, but it just didn't really get to do much. It's very sad. Next up, Voltorb. I'm putting that in A- tier. It's done a lot of work. Like, even in, like, the, like oh. You know, like, you won this game. What's the point? Uh, my, my team gets 6 0 by Voltorb from this position. <laughs> Because it's Terra Ice, so if I don't get this this uh, memento off, uh, I might literally just lose the game. It's it's really good. <laughs> it's a really good mon, and even though it's like, oh well, you have to use Terra in order to make it worthwhile, uh, it doesn't really matter. Not in the slightest bit, because well, it has bolt beam coverage. You also can run the well, let's say the pivot set. Oh, I guess they remove the huh? They remove the the rain dance one. Uh, but also, if you wanted to, you could run. A life orb set, which that one's pretty fun. You have taunt as good utility, but then you can also run the rain, the rain dance set, so that's pretty cool. And then just having bolt beam coverage is really hard to switch into. So overall, it's just got some really good matchups. Uh, you deal with crab, pawn, glimmit. You don't have to be annoyed by Gothita. You can kind of switch. You can, yeah, you can switch into to Magnemite really well. You can hit Mudbray really hard with Terra Blast Ice. You're good versus Deerling. Yes. I'm almost considering putting it into A tier. With the reason being like, okay, so good, 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 like bad, but like you can punish it with static. Good, good, good with Terra, good with Terra, good overall. Uh like kinda neutral because Goth can take the hits. Good because you outspeed and hit with Volt Switch. Good, good. You have to Terra, otherwise you die. You can Terra to destroy this. And then there's like nothing that really effectively walls it. Oh, cripes, man. I'll put an A tier. I'll put an A tier. It's, it's, it's one of the fastest, it's, I was gonna say one of the fastest, like it literally ties with the fastest mod in the entire tier. It's got good stab, thunderbolt, and volt switch. It has terror blast, ice to break through the stuff that will otherwise check it. It has taunt, if you want to, you can run substitutes. You got a lot of stuff going on. Next up is Watt Roll. <sighs> my my Wi-Fi just crapped out, didn't it? Alright, well, whatever. I'll, I'll just finish off these last four. It's not going to be too fast. Well, too, too hard. Uh, Watt Roll kind of goes into B plus tier as a result of having really nice defensive utility. Volt, Volt Absorb it has Terra type Water. Roost, Volt Switch, Hurricane, Thunderbolt is a really good combination in order to hit a lot of stuff in the tier. You have two immunities because of Volt Sword Absorb, so you have an electric immunity, you have a flying typing, so you have a ground immunity, and it's kind of hard to hit properly. You can wall Voltar before it terras, which can be really good for you. And you have Volt Switch to gain momentum. It could be really hard to switch into because it's a electric type that isn't hampered by ground because it has the flying coverage. It can deal with Toad really well. So all that's really nice. Wingle, I'm going to put in B plus here. What it does is that it's a fast knockoff user. You have Hydro Pump, Hurricane, Roost, Knockoff, and then you get up to 19 speed at level 5, so your special attack is pretty good too. But its main utility is that, oh, well, you actually pair up really well versus Ghastly. You can ruin Mariony really easily. And you have some really good matchup. Like, good, but kind of neutral. Good because this is a rock type. Bad because this outspeeds you, but you can run Terra type ground, and then you just flip the matchup. It's totally okay. Good, bad. Good, kind of okay, good, bad here. Like You have a lot of really good matchups, but the issue is just you're very frail and you have very little opportunities to switch in, which is unfortunate. Uh, is this actually... Yep, it did. All right, cool. Uh, next to Wooper, uh, 
it's like C tier. It, it goes alongside Paldean Whooper because actually it's it's better than Paldean Whooper because liquidation is much more valuable. Water absorbs pretty good. You still have the Stealth Rock Earthquake stuff. You don't absorb T spikes, but you're you're kind of fine. So like it's really hard to say like oh this is good like yeah like Marioni exists and there's a whole like Quaxley exists. So I mean there's also much better grounds in Diglett, Mudbray, and Toad School. So I mean. It's better than Pooper, but Wooper is not great. Uh, Zorua, I'm gonna put in a minus tier. So what makes Zorua valuable? It's got knockoff plus U-turn. Then you also have Sucker Punch as good priority, and then you have a whole bunch of support move pool. You can run Taunt. You can run Terror Blast Fighting. You can run Memento, like I did in that one, like the this one where I used Memento and won the game. It's got a lot of flexibility, and then you can also run a Scarf set pretty reasonably as a result of your good speed tier. You can also run set a Trick Extra Sensory, which allows you to break over Crab. So, I mean, overall, it's got a lot of really good traits, and then because of your Dark type, you can come in on some Psychic type moves and be really annoying. And just having the knockoff utility of removing Eviolite on so many Mons, giving them what essentially is a close combat debuff for the rest of the game, is pretty fantastic, so... It's really hard not to use Zorua, if I'm being honest. Uh, no, I shouldn't say it like that. It's very good, but I'm not sure if I would say it's like that that good, you know? Uh, but overall, I th I'm pretty proud with this tier list, because I think it, it really covers everything that's really good in the tier. Like, Ghastly and Toad are borderline everywhere. Diglett's really good. Crab's fantastic. Pawnyard's really good. So if you have any questions about, like, oh, well, what exactly do I want to use on everything, you can go to the Little Cup Discord. You can also go to the forums. There is this. That's the wrong thing I want to go to. So I just realized that my Wi-Fi doesn't work. Crap. So uh, there's a simple questions thread. So if you want to go there, check and see, like, oh, well, what does this Pokemon do? What are the best items to run this Pokemon? What are the best coverage moves? You can always go there and ask. But... I think overall this is a pretty good estimation of what's good in the meta and what's bad. Thank you all very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could like, share, subscribe, leave a comment down below, I'll do all that sorts of algorithm stuff. I'd very much appreciate it. Thank you all for your time. Have a good day.